All right, so Fisher projections are good and all, but they're not really ideal. Um, sugars don't generally exist in this straight chain form. They're actually normally in ring structures. And the way that chemists draw these ring structures um, follows the Haworth um, structure type of drawing. Haworth structures show the ring structures stereoscopically, so that means three-dimensionally. Okay, the substituents on the left-hand side of the Fisher projection will end up on the top face of the Haworth structure, and the ones on the right-hand side will end up below it. The penultimate hydroxyl oxygen encloses the ring by bonding to the carbonyl. So if I take um, one of the simpler sugars and draw the Fisher projection, I'll show you how to get to the Haworth projection from that. And I'll just use glucose, which is the simplest um, hexose, six-membered sugar. And so glucose is drawn like this. And this is going to be D-glucose. Kind of running out of space here. All right, let me add up the carbons just to make sure it works. One, two, three, four, five, six. There are six of them. Here one. And so that's what it should be. This is the Fisher projection for D glucose. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is use some color coding in order to kind of show this. Um, your book uses numbering. I like color coding. Let's keep the um, aldehyde group black. Okay, but the next group is going to be full of red to show you where they end up, followed by blue, green, pink, and purple. All right, so as it suggests, um, the substituents on the left end up above the plane of the ring, and the ones on the right end up below it. The penultimate hydroxyl oxygen, which will ultimately be this one right here, which is going to have a set of lone pairs, or two sets of them, will attack the carbonyl enclosing the ring okay and so we can count up the atoms from there we've got the oxygen will be one two three four five and a six-membered ring right there okay let me fix the colors though so green blue and red and black okay so there's six carbons the Haworth structure for this is going to be a six-membered ring so a cyclohexane ring essentially and we're going to have it kind of like this then it's going to stick out like this and actually this is a terrible drawing um, that I have done. So I'm going to erase this and start over. But um, here. Okay, so that's the beginning. And then the next part, you draw a wedge bond to kind of indicate that it's coming out towards you. So you're kind of looking at the front of the side of the molecule essentially and then you've got 
that right there. All right, so now where does everything actually fit into here? Well, normally the part that was the aldehyde is gonna be the carbon right there. When that OH in pink attacks that carbon, the, dub the double bond is gonna break and form a negative charge on the oxygen. Since the oxygen is slightly to the right there, I'm gonna put it down below, all right, which would give it a negative charge. The hydrogen, which is slightly to the left, will be above, okay? What happens is the pink oxygen is right here. It has a hydrogen there, and it would have an H, not an H plus, it'd have a plus charge because it has three bonds on that oxygen. The negative charge of the oxygen is gonna attack that positively charged center, making the electrons go back onto that oxygen. So what we get ultimately is that the pink hydrogen is gonna end up on that black oxygen. Okay. So, Um, the pink carbon we still need to look at is going to be right here, okay? And on that, we have the pink hydrogen and the purple methanol group, the CH2OH. And although the hydrogen in pink there is on the left, it had to, that whole group had to flip around in order to get to that point. So, in reality, the hydrogen is actually going to be below the plane, which will also put the CH2OH above the plane of that carbon. All right, then we've got the green carbon here. The hydrogen is on the left, so it's above. The OH is on the right, so it's below. Then we've got the blue carbon right here, which is, has the hydroxyl group to the left, so above, and we draw those straight up. That's kind of overlapping with everything here, but I'll write it like that. And the hydro, this is why Howorth structures are not the best, but you get a hydrogen down below, and then you have the red carbon right here with the OH below and the hydrogen above. And that's the Haworth structure of, again, D-glucose. So your book uses a different way of doing it, and they take the Fisher projection and just literally just flip it 90 degrees, or rotate it 90 degrees clockwise. And then you can see these will be above the plane the ones in the green box will be below the plane. And then your ring is actually going to be between these carbons in the center right there. And um, the penultimate oxygen, which would ultimately be right there. So you can see they've numbered them one through six, the carbons. Okay. And they do this little flip where they just say this rotates around. Okay, so now we get the structure in this drawing there. The oxygen on that penultimate carbon, carbon five, will attack the carbonyl. The hydrogen here will add to that oxygen forming this hydroxyl group. And so you get the Haworth structure there. The last thing to notice here is that uh, they have an, another naming thing to add to it where you have the alpha isomer and the beta isomer, and the only difference is that the hydroxyl group and the alpha isomer is ends up below the plane, and the hydroxyl group and the beta isomer ends up above the plane. And um, this, both of them are going to be made anytime you get this. And so technically, you have this beta D glucose. That's going to account for 64% of the glucose molecules in the Haworth structures in nature. And then the other 20 or 36% are going to be 
in the alpha D glucose. But then you also would have alpha and beta L glucoses. The L glucose um, forms, I guess the isomers of glucose actually don't really exist naturally on Earth, so um, it's not something to worry about, um, but glucose's common name is also dextrose because it is the D-glucose version. Now, L-glucose used to be marketed possibly as a use for a sweetener because it actually tastes exactly the same as D-glucose, but our bodies can't actually metabolize it. So if you had diabetes mellitus, then this would be perfect for you because um, your body doesn't need to use it for anything. And so you you wouldn't get um, high blood sugar levels. You just pee it out essentially. But that's not actually used because it's unfortunately extremely expensive to actually make. And so it's not um, something people can afford to do. Example five, draw the Haworth structure for alpha D mannose. Well, if you look in the book, sample problem 13.5 actually has um, the D mannose as this. structure right here. You've got OH, OH, H, H, OH, OH, H, H. And this is D mannose, okay. Now what it means for the alpha is that the um, alcohol from the carbonyl, this right here, is going to end up below the plane. So I'll draw the six-membered ring, the cyclohexane derivative, essentially, um, or the, what you would maybe call in your geometry class, a hexagon. And it's not a perfectly symmetrical hexagon because we're trying to see it from the side. And so we get this here. indicating the part at the bottom is really supposed to be in front. I'm gonna clean it up a little bit because I'm a perfectionist. But there's only so much I can do to make it perfect. All right, that's good enough for me. All right, so if I'm going to number these, I'm going to number them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then that penultimate hydroxyl group is 6. And we're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So your O is going to be right here from this red O there. The carbonyl, if I make that blue, is going to be alpha so the alcohol is going to be down here and the hydrogen is going to be up all right and then everything on the left is going to go above the plane so at carbon 2 we have the alcohol up the H down same thing at carbon 3 we've got the alcohol up the H down at carbon 4 we have the alcohol down and the H up. At carbon five, we have the, and since the bond had to rotate, that actually puts the hydrogen down below. Instead of having it above, um, it's going to be below because we had to rotate it to get that oxygen in place. And then the CH2OH, which if I make, green, this CH2OH is going to be above the plane here.